Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, uh, inspiration, guidance, advice. And um, previous video, uh, I dealt with the, um, the subject of the uh, first Parsha of uh, Sefer Vikra, the book of Leviticus, is Parsha's Vikra. Uh, he called, and he called. Uh, the first several chapters of the book of Leviticus have to do with sacrifices. And um, I'm not sure if I covered this in a previous video, but it's worth uh, review and it's worth uh, repeating. In English, the word sacrifice has, has the feeling or has the connotation of giving something up. You're sacrificing something as an offering. In this context, as an offering to God. You're sacrificing a, a goat, a bull, a pigeon, whatever, depending on the sacrifice. A flower. And you're giving something up. There are, when it comes to animal sacrifices, there's lots of different kinds of sacrifices. Not all of them involve, uh, involve animals. But when it comes to animal sacrifices, there are four main types. Um, that are offered on the altar, on the um, Mizbeach. There's the Korbanola, that's the, 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 the creature, or the, the, the bull, the, the, the lamb, the goat, whatever, is burnt up completely, reduced to ashes, no one derives any benefit from it. Uh, the next one is the, uh, the Korban Shlomim, that's the peace offering. Korban Chatas, this is the one where certain other religions uh, get fixated on. Uh, that's the sin offering, a korban chatas. And the korban asham, which is um, a guilt offering. In order to truly understand the Jewish concept of a sacrifice, we need to look at the word for sacrifice. In English, it has the connotation of giving something up. Not in Hebrew, completely different. Korban, a sacrifice, a korban. The three letters, the kuf, the resh, and the bes. The essence is in that shorish, in that root. Korov, to bring you close, to draw you close, to bring you near. Now, on a simple, basic pshat, black and white, balabatish, know nothing answer, well, what's happening? Well, you're bringing the animal by sacrificing, you're bringing it close to God, and, and um, through it being offered and consecrated on the altar. But um, let's look at it at a more profound and a slightly deeper, deeper level. Through the Korban ritual, the entire process, selecting the animal, bringing it to the temple, or purchasing it there, bringing it, bringing it to the kahanim, bringing it to the priests. They will slaughter it. They will um, cut it into pieces, place it on the altar. It'll be burned. Um, um, before the slaughtering, there's a confession over the animal. There's the placing of the uh, hands on the head of the animal. The concept of this animal, this should be me dying. And then um, you eat a portion of it with the kahanan, being in that environment, in the temple with the, with the priests. The overall Hope, the overall process, the effect of this process, is to um, bring the person, the person offering the korban, to bring him closer to God, to um, to korv him. Um, sometimes you've heard me say in previous videos is uh, uh, people in the kiruv business, to, to kiruv, to bring people close. Sometimes. Uh, I will say, uh, if you want to makar of someone, if you want to bring someone close to God, close to Judaism, that's this concept. The korban is the medium 
for bringing someone closer to the Creator, for strengthening and deepening that relationship with the Almighty. It's not just giving something up. It is a process whereby you draw yourself close to the Creator, the, cre the Creator, if you're sincere, if you do it with truth and honesty, because remember, the sacrifices of the wicked are an abomination to God. Going through the moves of the sacrifice is one thing, but unless you have tshuva, unless you have repentance, unless you truly mean it, you can shack all the animals you want, it's not going to do you any good. The real ingredient is repentance. Going through the moves of the, of the, uh, of the process of sacrificing, that helps. It's a physical manifestation of what should be going on inside. But remember, remember, remember. Repentance is the key. When we have a temple, when we have the kahanim in place, and we're able to bring sacrifice, great, wonderful, it's, it's part of the process. But without tshuva, without repentance, rivers of blood aren't going to do a single thing. Um, repentance is always the key sacrifices of the wicked. If someone goes there and says, ah, I'm just going to go through the moves, I can go through this and I'm going to dry, dry clean my uh, soul and everything's going to be God. It makes it worse. It makes it worse if you do that. You have to, the process has to have the proper effect on you. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.